What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I want to do a quick video showing you guys how to partition your hard drives in Linux using the fdisk command. Okay, so as I stated in the intro of the video, I want to sh basically show you guys the fdisk command and give you a overview of how to actually use it to partition your hard drives in Linux. Now, this is a command line tool. I've also done videos on Gported in the past, as well as I've shown how to actually use this command while doing a Arch install. But I just wanted to kind of hone in and focus on the fdisk command and just show you guys how to basically use it in one video so you guys can get a full understanding of how to actually partition hard drives, uh, create partition tables, you know, and set up the hard drive for usage on your Linux operating system. And the scenario I want to use for this video, let's say you went out and purchased a new hard drive that you want to put into a Linux server that you have at the house or a Linux desktop computer that you have at the house. And let's say you want to add some more hard drive space to your system. Well, this command is perfect to actually partition that drive and then I'll go through how to actually create the file system as well as mounting that drive to your computer that already has a Linux operating system installed on it. So let me go down and open up the terminal and walk you guys through how to actually set this up using FDIS. Now let's get started. So I have the terminal up and running uh, and I'm actually finna SSH into the Ubuntu server. It's a Ubuntu server and I have an extra virtual hard drive that's created and attached to the virtual machine. Uh, all we have to do is go into that machine and actually partition the drive using FDIS. So that's how I wanted to show you guys how to actually use this. Um, and I just want to, you know, show you guys the scenario or explain the scenario so you guys can get it. But within VirtualBox, you can create an extra hard drive and it kind of looks like uh, you installed a physical hard drive into another computer. So it's there. It's just virtualized. And that's the same thing with the hard drive that the operating system is installed on. It's an actual virtual hard drive, you know, that it's using to actually install the operating system on. But at the end of the day, in VirtualBox, it's just a physical file that's holding all the files that's being read by VirtualBox to run the operating system virtualized. So that's what we'll use to actually use the fdisk command to show you guys how to actually use it so let's get started on that let's go down and ssh into the server and i already have the ip address and let's go down and log into it boom so we're in a typical ubuntu 20.04 server and then the first thing I want to do is basically show you guys the man page for FDIS, uh, which is typically what I do for every command I try to show you guys, because I want you guys to get in the habit of actually understanding how to, to use the man pages for these commands. That way you can get some information on actually how to use them uh, before you actually start running it. And just to read a little bit about it right here, it says name FDIS, uh, manipulate disk partition tables. Uh, you can go as FDIS and then option and device. That's the synopsis. And then uh, here's another representation on how you can actually list the drives, which is kind of the first application that I want to, or, or option that I want to show you guys how to run. But they do have a whole bunch of options in here. I won't get into them all. I'll just simply uh, just show you the main ones that you really need to understand in order to to use the application. So let's uh, press Q for quit just to get out of that. And now let's go down and run FDIS-L. And this will list out the drives or the devices on the system. So let's type that in. So FDIS and then dash L. And like I said, that's kind of the list command. And anytime you're working with hard drives or partitions or anything to that effect, uh, you have to type sudo. And I ran it without typing sudo on purpose so you guys can actually see that. 
But anytime you, you either have to be roots or you have to have pseudo privileges when you run FDIS because you're working with partitions and you can basically destroy your system if you're not careful with this actual application. That's why it doesn't give by default, it doesn't give, you know, regular users access to actually run this command and see the hard drives and all that stuff. So let's press uh, enter on that. I type pseudo in front of it and let's press enter, type in my pseudo password. Boom. And I actually typed in my password wrong. So let me go ahead and type it in again. Uh, and there we go. So if I scroll back up to the top um, from when we ran it, if you look right here, it'll go through and list out all of the horde, all of the devices on the system. So you have a, a bunch of loop deck back devices. So don't worry about that. But what we want to really look at is the dev dash SDA. That's the actual device that holds our operating system that's where ubuntu is actually installed that's that device and as you can see it has two partitions on it already created this is the bios boot uh and then right here is the sda2 which holds the root operating system or pretty much everything whatever you specify on that partition that's what's stored there so it could be strictly a home directory or it could be you know everything most of the time since this was like a default install this is the boot and then this holds the full operating system as well as the home directory you know and all the files or whatever that's what's stored there now uh since we added another hard drive we have another sd uh well we have another device on the system that we can see and this device is sdb now the way you know this kind of works i won't get into how that works but basically uh in linux it uses devices and it adds devices and they all show up under the dev directory and fdis knows to look there for devices and since this device is there it's not mounted or anything you won't be able to see it you know like if you had a desktop environment you wouldn't be able to see this drive because it's not mounted but it is there. It's a device that's connected to the system. So it'll pop up on the F this uh, dash L. But this is the drive that we want to work with. And really the whole purpose of running F dish dash L, uh, this will find out what the device name is that we want to work with. And this is the, like I said, this is the device we're going to use. Uh, and it's a 10 gigabyte uh, hard drive that we connected to this virtual machine. As you can see, it's a VBox hard disk. So it's a virtualized hard disk. Okay, so now that we know the device name, we can go on and run FDIS against this device name. So you can either copy it uh, or type it in. I'll just type it in, but the command is simply FDIS. And also let me run this before beforehand, but you can, specify or you can list based on a device that you already know so let's say you already know that um the other device name is sdb well you could type that in and with the fdisk command you can actually look at that device specifically that way you can ignore you know all the other devices but that's just a way of listing out all the information for a particular hard drive uh that you specify now let's go on and actually partition the drive because right now it's just basically a blank disk it's nothing on it uh it's not partition in any way it doesn't even have a partition table and i'll get to that in a second when we actually get to f this so now let's uh go on and run a command and i keep not typing sudo but we have to type sudo uh for all these type of commands and what f this is is it basically opens up an application uh and it kind of it kind of uh it's all command line it has its own commands that you run once you're in the ap application and all the commands are ran against this one device that we specify that's why you want to run that's why you want to run and run the f this dash l to find out what the device name is that way we can run all our commands against this one device and we don't mess with any other devices connected to the system now once you get into it it says welcome to f this uh changes will remain in memory only until you decide to write them be careful before using the write command so that's one thing i kind of wanted to highlight uh anything that you do in this application before 
you run the write command is stored in memory so it hasn't been written to the hard drive or any changes that it shows you uh it hasn't been done to the hard drive until you actually tell it to write those changes to the hard drive so i just want people to understand that you know so you guys can can get that you're not actually making changes yet until you hit that command so the first thing i want to do is once you get into it like i said it's a whole bunch of commands that you can run once you get in that f disk uh, and the way you pull them up is actually by typing M. And that's why they give you this one here. That's the help. So you type M for help. So let's type M and press enter. And that'll run through and show you guys all the commands that you could do. Now, if we start up here at the top, this is how you actually create the partition table. If you want to use uh, MBR. And this is one of the first things you want to do when you actually get into it is actually uh, create a partition table, especially if it's a brand new drive with nothing on it. You want to create a partition table. Uh, so MBR is pretty much an older version of a partition table. And the new standard is actually GPT. And the reason GPT is the newest version that people use or the new standard that people use is because it supports UEFI mode which is what a lot of operating systems use nowadays instead of the old legacy bios mode which what which is what mbr is you know known for so what we're going to do in this example is actually use g the command g so if we go down a little bit this will show you the partition tables that you can create so g if you want to create mbr you have to use up here you have to flag it mbr and uh create it but uh, what I want to do is just go down and use GPT because that's kind of like the standard. That's what most people going to do when they uh, watch this video, because that's what a lot of newer hardware, you know, supports. So let's type G and press enter. And this will actually create that partition table or disk label for GPT, which is what we want. Now, once you create the partition table, the next thing you need to do is actually create some partitions. So just like similar when we were uh, looking at FDIS-L, how when we looked at the, our main device for the operating system, they had uh, SDA1, that was the first partition that had the boot uh, directory on it or a boot partition on it. And then SDA2, which had the full operating system on it uh, with the home directory and all that stuff. Well, we wanna do the exact same thing on this drive, but uh, most people, if you're you know using this as extended space then you can create one big partition on the drive but one thing i want to do is go on and create multiple partitions on this drive just so you guys can see how to actually do it now let's go on and create a new partition and the way you do that is simply by running the n command uh and just to scroll up just so you guys can see right fast uh what that one is uh where is it where is it there we go in so this is what you want to use to add a new partition and so let's go down and press in and press enter and then the first thing it's going to do is ask you the partition number and just like i stated earlier when we create a gpt uh partition table you can create up to 120 something partitions uh and i just you know see it. i see it now but uh it's actually 128 that you can create so 100 and i knew it was over 120 i couldn't remember the right number but yeah that's how many partitions you can actually create and just so you know this is similar to earlier when we ran fdis dash l uh and we looked at the main partition that sda1 sda2 uh for the actual let's see one was for the boot and then two was for the operating system which includes the home directory and all that stuff so that's basically what you're doing creating those different partitions and one thing i want to do for this video instead of just creating one big partition which that's most likely what most people are going to do i want to go down and create two of them so let's go down and uh press uh enter here boom and then the what it's going to do is ask you where you want the partition to start and the default is you know right at the beginning which is uh 2048 
So let's go down and uh, press enter. That's the default. Now, in order to create it a specific size, now you can push enter here and that'll just take up the full space on the drive. As you can see, the default will be the end of the drive. And I know it's kind of hard to understand it because of how it has it written out, uh, the size, but they have options in here that allow you to um, put the amount of space that you want in the partition, you know, in an easy to read format. So if you look right here, they have K for kilobytes, M for megabytes, uh, G for gigabytes, T for terabytes, and P for petabytes. So what we want to do is I'm going to just do use as example, but I'm going to make a four gigabyte hard drive in the front and then a six gigabyte hard drive in the, on the back end of the drive. So let's start off with uh, adding uh, four gigabytes. So you have to follow this format. So plus and then the size and then the the byte size. So let's go four. And then we want to do four gigabytes. So plus four G capital G just make sure you have this case sensitive. So you have to put the, the capital G in there. So I'm going to press enter on that. Boom. And now you can read right here. It says create a new partition one of type Linux file system and of size four gigabytes. Now you can go in and change the file system type, which I'm not going to actually do. Uh, it's no need to actually do it. I'm gonna just leave it as a Linux file system because I'm gonna create the partition. So I'm gonna write the file system as uh, ext4. But I just want to let you guys know that you can change the file type. So now let's go down and create that second partition. So the command to run is in again, press enter, and it already defaults to the second partition because it already knows that it has that one partition there. And press enter and it'll start at the end of the first partition. And then, so we wanna use that as a default. And then since we wanted to take up the rest, the remainder of the drive, we just press enter, but that'll essentially be six gigabytes. So let's press enter there, boom, and it's done. And it even tells you right here, created a new partition two of type Linux file system and of size uh, six gigabytes. So cool, we have our drives partitioned. Well, they're actually not partitioned, but we have it set up to where we could partition the drives. Cause like I stated, all of what we're doing is in memory right now. And it hasn't been written to the hard drive. Now that that's done, let me go down and show you guys uh, something else. So I'm gonna type M and this will actually list out the help again. And it's one command I wanna show you guys uh and it's actually p yes and here we go uh no that's q hold on let's see p p p and so hard to see on here here we go so p this will print out the partition table of the actual device that we have open so if we type p this will let you know everything that you have set up for this drive before we actually write to it and i recommend people use this command to make sure you are actually writing to the correct drive or the correct device, as well as uh, how you have it set up. So you can go through and look at everything that, that we did. So this label type is GPT. So that's what we set up the partition table as. This is the disk identifier. So that's the uh, that's the actual ID that you can use in uh, FS tab, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. I can't remember, but I know LS block will tell us what it is specifically. I'll show you guys that later. But these are the partitions that we created. Like I said, this one's four gigs. This one is six gigs. So both of those drives are there or partitions are there. Now that we have done what we wanted to do to the drive and set it up how we wanted to. So let's go down and, um, and type M again. I just want to show you those commands. Um, but the one you want to use, save and exit. So if we type W, this writes the table to this and exit. So everything that we, all the changes that we made, this will write it to the table and exit out of X, F this. Now there is another option right here, Q for quit. And this will quit without saving changes, but we want to save those changes. So we're going to type W uh, and this will write everything out to the drive for us. So let's press enter. 
And it'll, it'll also give you some information about what it actually did. It says the partition table has been altered uh, and reread partition table, syncing disks. So that actually done, uh, did what we asked it to do. Now, if we run F this, that's L again. So I'm gonna go up twice and actually let's just run it here. So F this um, and then dash L and don't forget to type sudo in front of it press enter that'll actually list out that drive and as you can see we have those partitions now created now the next thing you want to do is actually activate those partitions because you still can't use them until you actually make them make a file system on them and this will allow you to mount the drives to the system and they'll be writable too so how you do that is by using a uh, simple command is basically make file system and then you specify the file system type and then write it to the actual device so let's go down and do that right fast so you have to type sudo so sudo make file system and if this is not installed you can easily install it uh just by you know searching your repository for it, like make file system especially if you're using like a a non-standard like file system or whatever you may have to search it or something to to uh, get it installed on your system but ext4 is installed by default and it should be on this system and and i just tabbed it out just so you guys can see but e, uh, ext2 ext3 and ext4 is on the system so sometimes you i know in the past you had to add them depending on which one but they are on the system by default. So uh, sudo make file system dot ext4 uh, dash f capital F and then the device or the actual partition. You don't want to do the device, you want to do the partition. So dev and then sdb1 and you want to make sure you specify the right partition name. You know what I'm saying? The full partition name because you don't want to uh, run this command against like your uh, main hard drive because you can destroy something you know what i'm saying so let's press enter on this this that's the right partition name and let's press enter and that'll go on and create the partition for us or activate the partition and format it now let's go down and do that second one so boom and now we're done we're activating the partitions now you can actually mount those partitions so one thing i recommend you guys do is actually create folders under your mount directory so let's cd to the mount directory it shouldn't be anything there so mount is M mnt it's a default directory that's on all linux distributions well not all but most of them have this file structure um, and mount should be there so let's just go there right fast and i'm at ls it should be nothing there which is not and let's just make a directory uh let's make two directories uh let's make a let's say a music directory boom and we might have to yeah run as sudo so create a music directory and let's create a videos directory so video boom and if we ls this directory we can see both of those directories are there now let's go ahead on and mount those partitions to those directories so let's start off with the um the four gigabyte hard drive that we, or partition that we created so we could type uh sudo mount and then let's type the device in so device uh and then s d b one and we want to mount that to the mount directory and then the music directory because let's say you know that's where we want to store all our music so let's press enter and that'll mount that partition to that location now let's go down to do the same thing for the video directory by um mounting the other partition to the hard drive so let's press enter there and that will mount that directory so if we i mean it's no reason to really ls those directories but uh, we can um, ls uh, or actually let's just uh, cd to it. I mean we don't even really have to cd to it because it's nothing there uh, both of those partitions are fully empty now we could touch something to them so let's touch um, 
and then let's go mount uh, music and then let's create um, test uh, SDB SDB one dot txt let's just go down and create a file there and we actually don't have permissions there so let's go sudo and create something there like that and then for the video directory um we can just create a test to document in that directory and as you can see you can write stuff to it that drive is there um one thing you may have to do is modify the permissions which you can run a ch own or a ch mod and you can modify the permission permissions so that anybody can access this directory or you can specify a group you know what i'm saying by using ch own or user uh ch own by you know running that command against that directory so you'll have read and write you know and all the permissions that you want for that directory now lastly let me just go down and show you guys that these uh drives are mounted to the location and actually we can run another command which is df command so we can type df uh dash h and press enter and this will show us those actual drives and where they're mounted or the partitions and where they're mounted as you can see it's that three point or four gigabyte hard drive um and this is the actual location that is mounted and then we got our six gigabyte hard drive and this is the location where it's mounted right there so i just wanted to show you that so you can kind of see a representation of where those partitions are stored and then once you do this you can at this point uh add them to the fs tab and you can you know find out the block names or the block ids by typing uh i think it's list block no it's block id uh so block id and press enter and actually and actually let's uh try list block uh because i think that's what you need in order to find it no it should be block id block id should tell you the actual device id so let's type uh dev uh and then SD uh, B and press enter and maybe not. Um, not sure why it's not showing it, but uh, let's go LS block again and let's type in uh, dev uh, SDB and press enter. So that's yeah, that's a list block that'll list out the block. Uh, but I was trying to actually find a block ID. Uh, and typically block ID. So let's type pseudo block ID. I don't know. And maybe that'll bring it up. Yes, and it does. Uh, well, yeah, it does. But this is the actual block ID for that partition right there. So, or the UUID, and I'm sorry, UUID is what you actually need in order to add it to your FS tab. So, um, and I won't do a vi I won't go through and show you guys how to do that, but it's all there. Um, everything is there. All you have to do is uh, grab those UUIDs, add it to your FS tab, and specify the mount point that you want these drives to uh, mount when the system comes up. Because that's what the FS tab is for. It's basically to let the system know or the Linux operating system know where to mount all the drives when the system comes up, when it's booting up. So that's one thing you know you want to check out once you create these partitions and all that stuff so i appreciate you guys checking out the video i hope you guys got something out of it you know this is a great way of setting up hard drives or new hard drives that you install in your system you know once the system is already up it could be an extended drive and everything so uh, like i said i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave comments down in the comment boxes below and of course keep it techie